I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in Genesis chapter 23. Genesis 23 records for us a very difficult time in the life of Abraham, a man who has chosen to follow God in the footsteps of faith. And uh, certainly he is known for his faith in his life. And we see here how his faith in God and his faith in the promises of God sustains him in the difficult times of life. And that's important for us to know. That's important for us to understand. And that's important for us to be able to live in light of that. That it is our faith in God. It is our faith in his promises that sustains us and that helps us through the difficult times of our lives. And as we come into Genesis chapter 23, we see here that Sarah, the wife of Abraham, the one whom he has loved for many years, the one who has been his companion and best friend, has died. And uh, as we look at this, we saw Abraham's great sorrow in verse 2, in his mourning and in his tears. And uh, we also saw that... Uh, Yesterday, we looked at the fact how Abraham sought to obtain a burying place for Sarah and uh, the importance and the significance of that. And we saw how that like, Abraham was a man of a good testimony around the people that he was around, and certainly that is of utmost importance. Today, we want to look at how Abraham um, deals with Ephron the Higite. Uh, to buy the field that he wants in order to bury Sarah in. So in Genesis 23, I'm going to read verses 7 through 11, and then we're going to make a few comments on these verses today. It says in Genesis 23, 7, And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, Hear me and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zophar, Zohar, and that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field, for as much money as it is worth, he shall give it me for a possession of a burying place among you. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, and Ephron the Higite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth, even of all that went in at the gate of his city, saying, Nay, my lord, hear me. The field give I at thee, and the cave that there is therein I give it thee. In the presence of the sons of my people, give I at thee, bury thy dead. So as we come into these verses, we see how that uh, Abraham works out a deal with Ephron the Higite in order to buy the cave of Machpelah in verses 7 through 9. It's his desire to buy that cave. And there's a number of couple, there's a number of things that I want us to notice here in verses 7 through 9 that are of utmost importance to us. I want you to keep in mind that uh, this is a time of great loss for Abraham. This is a time when Abraham is experiencing great sorrow and tears but yet in his dealings with others even though he's going through a difficult time himself Abraham still had good manners uh, in both his posture and in his speech Abraham did not let his personal problems cause him to be inconsiderate of others uh, you know sometimes when we are uh, going through difficult times. We desire for people to be considerate of us, but we are not considerate of other people. And it's important that at all times, whether we're going through a difficult time or not, it is important that at all times that we treat people right, that we treat people with respect, and that we speak to them in a way that reflects that. Uh, especially, as we see with Abraham here, it is in the time of trial that we really see the quality of a person's faith. You know, faith really is not faith unless it is tested. 
We can talk about our belief in God all we want to. When we're on the mountaintops or when everything is going smoothly, we can talk about the faith that we have in God. But friends, what shows our faith to be real to the people that are around us and what even shows us how real and how genuine, how deep our faith is, is when we go through the difficulties of life. And Abraham evidenced much quality here by his courtesies that he shows to Ephron. He didn't allow the fact that he was going through a difficult time to justify the fact that he could give others a difficult time as well. And then also we see some things about business dealings in verse 9. Um, please understand that as I say this, it's not wrong to shop for the best price. It's not wrong to watch the sale flyers and to look for when things come on sales and take advantage of advertised sales. But friends, what is wrong is the attitude that some people have that people are always groveling and they're chiseling and they're trying to cut people on, uh, you know, get a cut rate price or trying to get something for nothing. But what they want is they want top-notch stuff. So they want top-notch stuff for nothing. And that's not the way it got to work. And, and as a child of God, people should not look at us as being cheapskates. People should not look at us as uh, always desire to get something for nothing. And uh, we see here that uh, Ephron offers to give it to him in verses 10 and 11. And um, as we look at, at what's going on here, some people say, well, why in the world wouldn't Abraham take it? Well, what we see in these verses is near as what I can tell from what I've read from people who have studied that time frame and things like nature is this is the method that was followed in those days. Ephron really did not expect Abraham to take this as a gift. And then after Abraham would refuse to take it as a gift, Ephron could then ask a high price for it. And we are going to see in the verses that follow that the price is settled, that they agree upon a price. And as we look at this tomorrow, we're going to see that Abraham pays what it is that he asks. And I encourage you, as a child, as a child of God, today as we close, let me encourage you with this. As a Christian... It's important that we be fair in our business dealings. As a Christian, it's important that we be consistent in our business dealings, that we're not trying to get something for nothing, that we're willing to pay the fair price for what it is that somebody's trying to get rid of or for a service that a person gives toward us. And as we think about this whole business of not only paying a fair price, let me also say this, as a Christian, let's not only make sure we pay the fair price, because, friends, there's something more important than you saving a few dollars in your pocket. And what is imp is important is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and people not looking at Christians as being cheapskates. And moreover that, not only the importance of, of not trying to get something for nothing, but let me say this. When somebody gives you a service, pay them promptly. Pay them as promptly as possible. Do not be neg negligent in paying your bills. Do not be negligent in paying what you owe people because, friends, we must understand that we represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in this world and that we must have practices, personal practices, business practices that honor and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and that certainly are not a rebuke about him before the world. Let's remember that we are the light of Jesus Christ in this world. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh, friends, be careful in your business practices that people do not consider you as shady or cheap and you give the cause of Christ and the name of Christ a bad reputation in this world. Oh, friends, be careful in your financial matters that you do things in a way that honors and pleases the Lord Jesus Christ and does not bring reproach to him. Tomorrow we'll look at the price that is settled upon and how Abraham pays that price to Ephron. Thank you for joining us today. We trust that the study of the Word of God is a blessing in your life. Have a great day.